If you want to learn a quick and easy way on how to add in some rooted highlights on dark hair, you're not going to want to miss this video. And if you're new here, my name is Morella Manelli and I'm a hair educator and salon coach. And I'm so excited to get this video started and show you how I do these rooted highlights using one of my favorite highlighting tools, which is the Koo board and all Kenra color. But before we get started, make sure you hit that subscribe button and turn on all notifications so you don't miss a video. Now let's go ahead and get started. All right, so to get started, we're gonna assess our canvas. So as you can see, my model is about 50% gray. She does have a really tiny baby root. The last time she got her hair done was about three weeks ago. And even though she got her hair professionally colored, she does have a tiny little hot root going on. So there's definitely a little bit of a formulation issue going on. So our overall goal is to create dimension. Her, She would love to have a dimensional, reddish brown brunette shade. She just feels like it's one solid color. So what I'm gonna do is not only touch up her gray cause we definitely wanna get rid of that, but we're also gonna do a little bit of correcting to help with the banding as well as give her the dimension that she's looking for. So those natural highs and lows. So I'm gonna start out by pre-sectioning her. Now because she doesn't necessarily want highlights, I'm going to isolate out a triangular section on the very top. So that way that piece of hair is just going to veil right on over the highlights we're going to place right underneath. I decided that I'm going to use a halo sectioning for this entire application because I want to work with the shape of the head because round sections are always going to create diffusion. So in addition to adding the highs and lows, I really want to take care of a lot of this hot root as well as that dark banding that she has going on. So I want a lot of diffusion going on. So I'm gonna start highlighting within this halo section, keeping her entire hairline brunette. And then I'm leaving that little triangular piece right on top. So we're not gonna add any highlights to that. So for this project, I'm using Kenra Professional Simply Blonde Beyond Bond Lightener at a one to two mixing ratio with 20 volume developer. I love this lightener because it's gonna give me the bond protection that I need. And it's gonna give me the amount of lift that I need as well, especially because I'm working with lots of layers of color going on here. Keep in mind that I'm not looking for a lot of lift, but I do want to create a more even looking canvas. So right here where I'm getting started, this is the only little highlight I'm going to put just because she has that low density and I want to keep her hairline brunette. So most of the time brunettes like seeing brunette around their face. Keep in mind that the hair is like a frame to a picture. So if you are used to seeing a lot of dark around your face, you're gonna want those highlights or dimension to kind of poke through behind the frame. So that's really the reasoning behind not taking these highlights right onto her hairline. So right here on this underside, she has a little bit higher density, but you can still see I'm keeping a lot of hair towards her face here. I just wanna break up this line of demarcation. So overall, I am taking the highlights a little closer to the root. I will be incorporating this really fun comb a little bit later, but for these first few foils, it's just a slice and then a weave right on top. All of the sectioning within this halo section that I created are diagonal backs. And this is really important because she does wear her hair towards her face. And if you want to check out another video about the foil placements and the effects they create, make sure you check that video out. The link will be in the description. But it's really important because this direction of her pulling that hair towards her face is going to provide the diffusion that we need to break up these lines of demarcation. Now, if you were paying attention to when I was painting those highlights closer to the face, I did this sweeping up motion, getting a little closer to the root, but I love stroking my brush up all the time because this is how you're going to diffuse that foil line when you're highlighting. So for everything that's in the interior, I'm doing more of a foliage effect here. And you can even see that the direction of the lightener goes a little higher closer to the face and then it also gets a little deeper when you go towards the middle or the center of the hair. So this is where I'm starting to incorporate this really fun comb. I just simply take a slice and use it to create this weave. And then in addition 
to this coup board here, this is gonna push any of those little loose hairs, kind of creating a little bit of a teasy light, but without the tease. We all know that teasing the hair can get really tricky detangling once we wet it and we're rinsing out. So I don't wanna create any more work for myself. So using this board just kind of really makes it super easy and fun, keeping it really rooted. But like I've mentioned in my other videos, if you don't have this board or you don't have this comb, you can still recreate this look. You're just simply going to make really uneven weaves and just do like one little tease on your section, just keeping it really loose and you don't have to use a board at all. So these are all optional things that you can do, but I love having these tools because they make my foiling and highlighting services go by so much quicker. So if you're able to invest in tools that make it easier for you, why not? Now, when it comes to painting, there's lots of different variations that you can do, but as you can see, I'm still keeping the lightener a little higher towards the front of the face and a little lower, creating that foliage. So just be very visual with what you're creating and where exactly you want that lightener to live. So everything is diagonal back, but once I get closer to that curvature of the head, I do start to pivot, meaning I'm gonna create little pizza slices pretty soon with my subsections. So it's gonna be a little bit more narrow towards the face and wider towards the back. So whatever I can't really grab comfortably in this foil is just gonna sit out. So think of like that back center is just really not being touched whatsoever. However, I will be adding in some foils, but it's going to be very visual. This is kind of like a combination between a structured foiling technique but also using the visual idea of a balayage. So as soon as I get to this top section here, this is where I'm more horizontal to where I'm standing. This is also going to create, again, that diffusion of how these highlights are going to live right on top. This is what's going to get rid of visually that band that she had going on. My best advice is when you are doing a foliage, use the balayage techniques that you've learned by really understanding that visually how your lightener looks applied onto the hair is exactly how it's going to lift. And what you want to pay attention to is the saturation, because if the saturation is uneven in your foil, it's definitely going to be uneven as it lifts. So this is imperative when you're looking for something super even, as well as how much lift you're gonna need, this is where the foil comes into play. So anytime I'm doing brunettes, I love using foil because it's, it's really incubating all of that heat. Now for this back section, I am taking that little halo section right where we started, and I'm gonna highlight right on top of that. So you can even see the whole section slightly curved. I'm not concerned about highlighting the underneath. She does not wear her hair up, so that was something that I consulted with her prior. However, if she did wear her hair up, I definitely would probably add some hairline highlights, but still leaving the exterior brunette. So just keep that in mind. Having those highlights kind of poke out behind the frame is gonna be essential. Overall, everything in the back is going to be horizontal placement as far as where the lightener is concerned. So even though my sections are round, I'm taking the lightener equally as high up as I can across the foil line. And each of these sections are approximately an inch and a half wide. Again, I'm just looking for slight blending here. This is very visual on exactly where I want those pops of dimension to kind of poke through. I'm only adding in about four foils, so just keep in mind that less is more. And in this case, these foils are just to kind of marry what we have going on in the front. I'm not looking for a ton of brightness or anything in the back. We're just looking to use these highlights as a corrective tool. So once I got all of these foils in, I'm just gonna let her process for about 30 minutes. 
And keep in mind that Kenra color does not require heat when processing. So you're just gonna do this all room temperature, if at all necessary. It's just kind of cool inside of the salon. You can always throw a towel over their head. But I'm really loving this lift that we got after 30 minutes. This is perfect for the type of toner that we're gonna work with. So for her final color, I'm gonna be using the monochrome 4BRV Plus and 6BRV Plus equal parts with 20 volume developer. Now this is permanent hair color that's going to be applied to her root area to cover her gray. So I love the monochrome collection because it has a really nice saturated finish for the type of look that we're trying to achieve. And then for her toner, while this is processing, I'm gonna be adding in 7B with just a ribbon of 6R. And just for funsies, I actually did decide to throw in another ribbon of 6VV, but I'm gonna be mixing this up one to two with its dedicated nine volume developer. Now, the reason why I decided to add in this ribbon of 6VV is just to kind of create that violet red effect with that brown base of 7B. So I was just really excited to try out this toner. It's the first time I kind of mix all these colors together. So first things first, I'm gonna shampoo her and then 100% dry her to do this permanent hair color application just to her roots. Now just keep in mind, she did have that little tiny baby root of just three week growth. And I'm just applying it right onto that zone there. And I'm just gonna put the timer on for 20 minutes and then come back to apply her toner. So this color line does need to process for a full 40 minutes, so that way we can get the coverage necessary. But when I get ready to apply that toner onto those mids and ends, I'm actually gonna comb this monochrome color right on down so that way we can take care of that kind of little hot root band that she had going on. But you can already see the little pops of highlights that we have going on here. So again, she's looking for dimension. We're not looking to keep these highlights as bright as they are. We're using this for a corrective base so that way she has those highs and lows kind of poking through. So like I mentioned, as soon as I get this root color on, I'm gonna set the timer for 20 minutes. And this is gonna be the indicator of when I need to get those mids and ends on with the Demi Permanent hair color. And since I'll be applying the Demi Permanent onto dry hair, and I do want maximum saturation, I'm gonna start the 20 minute timer after I get on the entire Demi Permanent onto those ends. So this is gonna give me plenty of time for this root color to 100% cover these really resistant grays that she has. So after this 20 minutes is where I'm putting on the Demi, I'm combing that permanent color down just a little bit. So this is what's going to stain that hot root that she had going on. And I'm looking for this Demi to not only tone down these highlights, but it's also gonna help even out that canvas that she had from previous banding from her other hair color that she had done. Another thing to keep in mind about Kenra color is that it is non-progressive. That means that the permanent hair color, if you left it on for over an hour, two hours, or whatever project you're working on, you don't have to worry about it over processing. So that's the beauty of working with Kenra color, permanent and demi, is that you can use them in tandem depending on the project that you're working with. So after about 20 minutes, I am taking her back to the shampoo bowl, rinsing her out and shampooing her with Lux shampoo. Now I normally do at least two shampoos to remove any permanent hair dye. Typically though, if I am working with just toners or Demi, I will do either just a really good rinse or maybe one shampoo, but because this was somewhat of a big project in a lot of ways, being that it was a correction. I wanted to make sure that I did two thorough cleanses to get rid of any color residue right onto that scalp area. I went ahead and rinsed this and then followed up with one of my favorite products right now, Rapid Hydration Mask in Rich. Now I decided to use the Rich formula because she does have coarse hair and this is going to hydrate the hair in three minutes. Like it is complete magic. You need to try this and it's a great add-on service in the salon that you can easily charge an extra $10 for. And the reason why I love this as a great add-on is because I'm not just slapping this on to her hair. I want to get this on the mids and ends, let that soak 
in and take advantage of that three minutes to give your client a relaxing massage while they're treating their ends. So not only are they going to appreciate that their hair feels amazing, they're also going to appreciate the little extra relaxation spa quality time that you provided right at the bowl. I'm starting out her final style with smoothing blowout lotion. So I'm just gonna use a few pumps of this. And I absolutely love this because it does have a little bit of hold, but it also helps maintain frizz and also is perfect for a round brush blowout, especially on coarse hair like my clients. So I start out by just flat wrapping her using a flat brush, you can use a detangling brush or a paddle brush and my blow dryer, I'm just trying to get those roots dry. And then I finish up with my round brush. For extra body, I do love using my two inch wide ceramic round brush. It's one of my favorite sizes to use. And I just feel like she has lots of body, but I am gonna be following up with some curls. So first I start out by layering in silkening heat cream. Now this does have thermal protection and it's perfect for dry hair specifically if you want a flat iron, but I also love it for adding in some curls with body. So what I'm using here is my T3 single pass curling iron. It's a one and a quarter inch, and I'm only leaving this on for just a few seconds on level three heat and simply stretching those ends out as I release the curling iron. And I just really love this combo because the silkening heat cream does not have any hold. So this product along with using a curling iron is perfect for somebody who just wants a little body. They want to maintain that softness in their hair and they also want to have a smoothing effect as well. So my model has naturally curly hair and it's a little coarse. This just makes it the perfect marriage between the silkening heat cream and the curling iron. So here is her before, it was flat brown, no dimension, no highs and lows, and here is her after. We have a gorgeous red brown shade that she was totally desiring. She's got highs and lows. We fixed all of the banding and the hot roots. And then I did finish her off with a brand new product that I am slightly obsessed with. It's the Kenra Anti-Humidity Spray. It does have a light hold of five, so it's gonna give you a little bit of control, but what I love about it is that it does have a lot of frizz control and also high shine, and I love the anti-humidity factor to it. So anybody that has curly hair that likes to wear their hair blown out, this is the perfect product for them. So just to give you a little recap on how we added natural highs and lows, this beautiful dimensional color, we started off on her banded canvas using Kenra Professional Simply Blonde Beyond Bond Lightener at a one to two mixing ratio with 20 volume developer, and then processed her for only 30 minutes, shampooed her out 100% dried her, and then followed up with permanent monochrome in four BRV plus and six BRV plus equal parts with 20 volume developer, and then blended that into Demi Permanent of 7B with a few ribbons of 6R and 6VV. So I really hope you enjoyed this hair tutorial, and if you did, please give this video a thumbs up. Make sure to subscribe. If you want to get more free education sent right to your inbox, be sure to head on over to morellaminelli.com and sign up for my newsletter. And if you're a hairstylist or salon owner that enjoys listening to podcasts, be sure to check out Hair BNB. It's a podcast all about hair, beauty, and business. You can find me on my other social channels like Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok, all under Morella Manelli. And if you want to be a model for one of these YouTube videos, simply head to the link in the description and get on my model list, email list. <laughs> And if you want to get more behind the scenes and some early access to a lot of my educational YouTube videos and simply be able to connect with me and get the really cute little emojis, then be sure to check out my YouTube membership right here on the site. If you want to learn more about how to up your social media marketing game as a hairstylist or salon owner, be sure to check out my Beyond the Chair Mastermind. It is a group community coaching session where it's held once a month with other industry professionals to help elevate your marketing game. All the links to everything that I just mentioned you can find down below in the description. And finally, be sure to check out my other hair tutorials right here on this channel and I will see you in the next video.